Hello everyone and welcome to this special two-part series talking about how to make a damage table like the one you see in say Pokemon games where you can see elemental types versus other elemental types and have a multiplier come from the damage that is taken. So this is achieved via a data table and we're going to go through the process of how to actually create this and set it up to use in a game. In this first part we're going to set up the functions and the data table itself to allow us to read and write our own multipliers. So let's begin. So to start things off, we're going to first of all set up our various elements that we're going to have in our elemental data table. So in my content browser here, I'm going to create a new enum to handle this. And you find the enums in the blueprint section, you go to enumeration, there you go. I'm going to call this one e, or ele enum, and then elements. And in here, we're going to set up all the various elements that you may have. Now, obviously, this is totally up to you how many you have. I'm going to do three of them uh, just for simplicity sakes. So we're just going to do water, grass, and fire. So these are making like a list of uh, options you can choose from. Um, so you're going to have water type, grass type, fire type, um, and hit save. Okay. Then we're going to close that and then we're going to go into a struct design. So we can go into our blueprint and we're going to structure and we're going to do elemental damage table struct. And this is a very simple structure. This is literally just going to contain a map of different values. So we can go into new variable and oh, we don't need two, we don't need one. Uh, the first one, or the only one that's going to be in here, is going to be elemental uh, uh, data, we we'll call it. I don't know what to call it. Uh, we we'll call it ele elemental response, actually. That'd be better to call it like that. And uh, as I said, this will be a map. So you're going to choose the E number you just made. So you're going to E elements. And from there, you can change it to a map by clicking this little button here to a map. And you want to change this number here, or this value here, to float. So you go on E elements by a float. And that's all you need for this struct. So the idea is behind this is that we're going to have a, a table which contains all the different responses that our characters would have upon receiving certain types of damage. And this will help us design, say, like uh, multipliers. So we can say for fire, the multiplier is going to be 1.2 for a particular uh, element, okay, and so on and so forth. But that's all we need now for our struct. So using this struct, we're going to create a data table. And you create data tables by going into the miscellaneous section, and you'll find data table. And then drop down, you're going to choose that struct we just made. So I've got elemental damage table struct. And click OK. And we're going to do this one as elemental damage table. And we go inside here. So what we're going to do here is that on each a row is going to contain one row name which is going to match the enum of the element and then alongside that it's going to have the responses to that elemental type so if we go to click add new row to this and the first one we're going to have in here is going to be water and then you go down to elemental response and you click add and you can add the different various uh, responses this has with the different elements now, at the moment you'll see that when i add a new one i get water and it says zero Obviously, this is not great because I, if I have like 10 of these, I'm going to have to do this 100 times. Um, so we don't want to keep doing this and changing this to one or whatever it needs to be uh, each time. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear that and then go back to our data struct. And in our data struct, we're going to set the default value for our elemental response. So you go to default values here and you click on new one here. You choose fire and change it to one. So by default, all the elements will just do normal damage. So one equals normal damage. Grass is one. And then water is one. Okay, you do that for all the elements that you have in your data table. So now if I go back to my damage data table here, when I make a new row, I'm going to have it pre-filled with the all the elements set to one. So then I just say with water, water's going to deal, imagine this row name by the way is incoming um damage so if you get an incoming of water damage what is the response if you're a fire type water type or grass type 
So water type against fire. Fire is going to take, let's say, two times the amount of damage. Uh, grass is going to actually do a lot less. So I'm going to do 0 0.5 damage. And then water be one. And we add another row. This one we'll do as fire. And this again, we just change these values as they see fit. So fire is going to do one. Grass is going to do two. And water is going to do 0 0.5. And we're going to add one more grass. And grass against fire is going to be 0 0.5. Grass against grass is 1. And grass against water is 2. OK. Um, right, there you go. So here we've got a row names all down here with all the different elements. And these are your incoming damage types. So if we did not damage to something, we want to say water damage is the type being applied. And then we're saying what is the response with water as the incoming damage and it'll output these values, which is a multiplier. So two means two times the amount of damage. I'm going to save that and that is our data table done there. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is create the functions to be able to call and look up this data table. So we're going to use a common function library to handle this. So I'm going to just right click and create a blueprints function library. You may already have one if you're making a game. Um, I just tend to call this one a common function library. And these are functions that any actor can access um, freely, so they can access any anytime, anywhere. Um, and this one we're going to say is going to be called get damage multiplier. Okay. And for this, we need an input. And the first input we're going to have in here is going to be the incoming damage. So we can do incoming damage and this would be e element it'd be that e num we made and then we have another input and this can be affiliated element i will do elements and make this an array so you can actually have multiple elements to assigned uh, creatures so if your creature is also a fire and a dark type or ghost type for example you can make that work for that in that case so in either way you're going to get the incoming damage as an element and you got this array as elements so to get the incoming damage and using our data table we have to get the data table row and there it is and you're going to choose your elemental damage table there and now you want to get the row name from the incoming damage now uh, for the input. Now we can't just plug this straight into here because this doesn't actually give us the enum as we want as a name. So what we will do is drag out from here and do a to string method. So enum to string. And then plug the string into the row name and it will convert it properly for us. We then plug that in like so. So this is going to find the associated data we need. So I take this out row here and break it open to get our map. Now the map, we just need to search for the affiliated elements and see what the values we get out of this. So we're just going to right click and search for our affiliated elements input. This is the same as this pin here. So you're dragging the line across it and we're going to do a for each loop. Oh, very found. There we go. Okay. Now, how you handle multiple elements is up to you, uh, but we're going to do a simple compounding of elements. So if you've got fire as set to two and their shadow is set to 0 0.5, we'll add the two together um, or multiply the two together. So two times 0 0.5 becomes just one again. Okay, so it cancels it out. Or you could do something where you take the highest number. It's totally up to you how you want to do that. But what we're going to do is to take the responses and multiply them together in this case. So on the affiliated elements, we've got array element here, and we've got the elemental response. So we need to find the response for each element. So you're going to take out from our response and do find. And you're going to drag in the array element. Now I'll find us the multiplier associated to that element. So we've now got this out, and as I said, we want to compound them. So I need to take each of these and store them in an array as a local variable. So let's make a local variable. And this would be uh, L for local. And then we'll do uh, multipliers. 
and that'll be a float array. You know, drag this out and do add. But we're only going to add it if it finds it. So we can use this boolean here, put that into a branch, and put that in there. Okay. So that will go through and give us all the multipliers related to that element. So but remember, default one is uh, one. So uh, one times one is equal to one. But one times 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. So you're going to get those multiplied values coming out in, in the end. And speaking of that, on the completed of this for each loop, we then need to go through each of our multipliers and multiply all these values together. So on completed, we're going to do another for each loop. And I'm going to drag in our L multipliers. And from there, we're going to take the array element and we're going to multiply it by the existing number we have. And so we're going to create a new local variable for this. And we do L current multiplier. And you can do current multiplier is going to have a default value. Uh, sorry, it has to be a single variable and a default value of one. Okay, so now you can take current multiplier out and do multiplied by the array element and then set that back to the current multiplier. So you can go through each one, multiplying up the different values. Okay, then on completed of this, we're finished. We've got all our multipliers counted up and collated together. So on the completed here, we're going to do a return node. And then we're going to be returning the current multiplier. So let's drag that out, do get, and then we're going to add it as a pin to the final node. And we're going to give that the name of damage multiplier. Okay. Um, and that is it. And when you've got row not found up here, we're going to just make sure we've got things set up correctly. We can go return node and put that on the row not found as well. And change that to one. Okay. Okie dokie. So that will do that for there. I'm going to hit save and we're good. That brings us to the end of part one. In the next part, we're going to go through and apply this to our game by showing how to use damage types to apply different elemental attacks to different elemental targets, thus showing how we can get different multipliers out from our data table. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daily. We can catch all my episodes early before everyone else. I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you've subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.